now entering the Duop Zone. show today with his music and his humor and his life experiences as I'll share some of the interviews that I did with him back in 2016. I had the opportunity to speak with Larry uh, about two weeks ago. He sounded very weak, but he was still convinced that he would get back on stage, a spot he spent his entire career on. He decided to move to Florida with his daughter Nicole to see if the recovery couldn't get better. A few days after arriving, he was placed in ICU and he never recovered. He passed away on September 5th. He loved his music, so let's go back and listen to how it all began. Here's Larry Chance from 2016. Well, I sang on the corner like all the other kids did at the time, you know. Um, but when I moved to New York is when I really got serious with it and decided to form my own group. And Philby would be one of those, you know, let's hit a note, and you'd, you know, you'd, you'd sing with different guys. But in New York, at the Vander Shiles High School in the Bronx, in the second floor boys' room, uh, the guys I sang with there were the guys who, of course, became the Earls, and uh, I love the sound, and uh, we took it from there. I never had an official group of my own affiliate. I just sang with different guys, you know, we just hit some notes. But uh, until I moved to, to New York, I didn't have my own group. What was it back then? I know you said you sang in the street corner. Everybody was doing it, I guess, back then. But what was it that made you say, hey, you know what? I can do this. Girls. <laughs> I, <laughs> I discovered girls like singers. I don't think I've ever done an interview with an entertainer who didn't tell me that girls were the reason they started singing because the girls loved the music and back in the 50s they were stars they were they were the biggest of anything i'm telling you they all loved them and larry had that great sense of humor if you've seen him in person i know many of you have around the world not just here in this country performed all over the world but he had a great stage presence and a lot of it came from the humor side of him he kept us entertained the entire way he loved the good times so i'm going to play this song off his uh, cd living for the good times and it's called Good Times. Be 
This is Larry Chance with breaking news. You need to subscribe to Glenn Fisher's Doo-Wop Ramblings newsletter. It's very informative and it's going to keep you updating on all that's going on in the world of doo-wop with the latest news, concerts, videos, and great doo-wop links. To subscribe, send Glenn an email at doo-wop.revival at yahoo.com. Tell him his pal Larry Chance told you to subscribe. You won't regret it. Larry was one of these guys that would do anything for anybody. Just about. I'm telling you. I went to him, I don't know how many times. He did that promo for the newsletter several years ago. Uh, at the same time, he gave me three or four of his CDs to make sure I played them on the show. He recorded so many different promos for our show, for doo Radio. He was just there for anybody that needed it. Back to our 2016 interview with uh, Larry. He talked about Trade Martin and Willie Winfield and a couple of the songs that became big hits for him. I think anyone who sings or who, who, the way that I did, you had that dream. I was one of the fortunate ones. I got lucky and had a little bit of success. But uh, I think we all have those dreams. We all want to be stars. Everybody wants to be a star. And again, uh, I was very fortunate. Tell me how uh, Trade Martin changed things for you. Trade took us into the studio. He was the one who believed in us. And, uh, you know, he was a great artist in his own right and a great session musician to boot. And, um, yeah, we owe him a lot. Of course, Rome Records, him and Johnny Power, that was their baby. And uh, that label was distributed by Bill Buchanan of Buchanan and Goodman fame. Did you do any work with those guys? Because they were phenomenal. I mean, they, they created some stuff that was just unbelievable. No, 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 no. I just met Bill through uh, his uh, distributing the, the recording. All right, so this is Rome Records. That was your first uh, studio. And uh, the first hit uh, that came up was Life is But a Dream, a great harp tones uh, song. You also, in that session, did Sunday Kind of Love. Uh, and Raul Cedar, who was just a great, great individual, I got to meet him many times over the years, uh, a fan- fantastic individual and, and just so creative, uh, and what a great group that the Harp Tones were. The Harp Tones were one of my favorites. In fact, you know, I worked with the Harp Tones so many times over the years, and, um, you know, I opened the show with, with uh, Life is But a Dream uh, 99 out of 100 times. The one time when I didn't was, of course, when I worked with the Harp Tones. And Raul and Willie both came up to me many times. Please, why don't you ever do your version? It's different. And, you know, you, you just don't do that. I mean, it's their song, you know. And uh, I always felt like this. If you can't do it as well, do it differently. Because you know, that's one. Willie was one of my heroes. He still is. A real gentleman. Yeah, it's called respect. It's called respect. That's what it is. All right, you did uh, Life is But a Dream and Sunday Kind of Love uh, on the Rome record label. Let's take a minute now and listen to both of those songs, okay? Okie doke. Will you take part in
Listening to the Doo Wop Revival with yours truly, Glenn Fisher, as we pay tribute to the great Larry Chance, who passed away recently. I want to read a couple of notes that I saw on Facebook posted by friends of Larry, and it's typical of the way he was and the way people looked up to him. This one from Jimmy Bentz, who sang with the Planetones. Truly a sad day as we mourn the loss of one of the greats, Larry Chance. I was always happy when I saw Larry in the gig. He was a wonderful man and an exceptional talent. He commanded the audience like few others can. Between his iconic songs and his effortless sense of humor, we looked up to and admired and adored this man. He will be missed beyond words. Always a hoot. When I was with Larry, we made a great combo, since he thought I was crazy and I thought he was nuts. It's going to seem different and strange not to see, work, and talk to him again. Rest in peace, my friend, and thanks for so many wonderful memories. Jimmy Bentz. Here's one from Jimmy Gallagher. I will miss you, Larry Chance. We chose to take a picture together at every show where we appeared together since 1992. What a fabulous guy. I was so honored to be his pally, Jimmy Gallagher. Now, I've got a feature in the newsletter, uh, which is September 10th, entitled Larry Chance and Friends. And he had a lot of them. And what I did is I took his signature song and added pictures of many, many people, many pallies that he took the time to take a picture with. I think you'll enjoy that in this week's edition of Do Up Ramblings, which will come out on September the 10th. I hope you'll take a read. Now let's go back to the interview where Larry talks about moving over to High Weiss and Old Town Records. Tony Power had written a song called Remember When, which we played around with a lot when we were on Rome. And... Um, Stan Vincent liked it, but he wanted to change it, and he rewrote it to remember then and uh, change the lyrics. And um, fortunately for us, because it was our biggest hit. Uh, at the time, you were the Earls, and uh, High had uh, a, a, a hand in how you became Larry Chance and the Earls. Tell me that story. Well, uh, you know, I, I, we had done... Um, 
remember then and never and eyes and all were, were somewhat successful. And uh, right after uh, we did uh, eyes, I always wanted me to do a single, a la Bobby Rydell kind of a thing, of a song written by um, Murray the K's mom. And it was called Promise Her Anything But Give Her Love as a single. And I didn't want to do it. He said, come on, take a chance. You got nothing to lose. Take a chance. I said, no, I want to stay with the group. I'm not telling you to leave the groups. Take a chance. If the group, if you get lucky with a hit, you take a group. Take a chance. Larry Chance, that's what I'm going to call you from now on. And that's when he began to put the Earls featuring Larry Chance on the recordings. You mean your, your real name isn't Larry Chance? Really? <laughs> um, is for you, yes, yes, and I think a lot of the, the, the uh, Larry Chance and the Earl fans know that. Um, let's uh, take a listen to Remember When, and then we'll move into Remember Then. Remember, 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 when, when, remember, when. We walked in the park, all hands in the dark, whispering our love words in the moon. You love me then. Remember, 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 when. Remember, 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 when we told our friends, our love was all so real, and it would never end, things to watch us laughing happily, and then they envied you, and envied me, now those days are gone, yeah, you're in another's arms, I've lost happiness, it's true, but now and then. Remember, 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 Tell me how that came about. Uh, remember when came long before we did remember that. 
Remember Then was the rewritten version of Remember When. Remember When actually should never have been released. It was just a demo we played around with, and um, we never thought it was going to be released. So uh, it actually wasn't released until the 70s, I think. Well, it was about... It, it was actually about two years later, so there was a little, you know, vocal growth, I guess you could say. A little maturity, a little more vocal maturity. We are paying tribute to the late, great Larry Chance of the Earls, the lead singer of the Earls for many, many years. Just a great, great talent here on the doo Revival with yours truly, Glenn Fisher, on WJCT Anthology HD3, also broadcasting on DooWopRadio.com. You know, Larry... In my opinion, his signature song is I Believe. And uh, he sang it, he said, at every show. He closed every show with it from the time he recorded it and every show we ever did. He always did that song, and he always dedicated it to one of the late Earls. So here's Larry from 2016 talking about I Believe. I Believe is very special. We close every show with it. It's dedicated to a former member, Larry Palumbo, who passed away serving our nation as a member of the 82nd Airborne Division. And I dedicate the song to him and our fallen heroes and our veterans, especially our Vietnam veterans, who I don't think get a fair shake, and uh, our, our young men and women in uniform. They're my heroes. Well, every time I've been at one of your shows and you ask us to stand up, and you do, you ask all the people who serve to stand up in the audience. And uh, being someone that did serve for four years in the Marine Corps, you know, I feel good when, when I know we're being recognized, and uh, I know how important that is to you. And... Uh, well, have you sung that? I appreciate your service. Believe well, me. thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, have you sung that song more than any other one? And do you get more requests from that than any other song? Oh, absolutely. It's the most requested without a, without a doubt. We're not going to go any further without listening to I Believe. time or another, I guess we've all lost someone, somebody near and dear to our hearts, but you know I've got to tell you there's no cause to fear because there's someone above and he watches over them and over each and every one of us.
at that particular time, after that song was released, uh, you must have been rolling in the money. You guys were probably millionaires by then. Oh, yeah, and right. Driving big cars. And uh, <laughs> I mean, you, you probably thought after uh, Life is But a Dream that it was going to be uh, very, very lucrative, but nof nothing ever came, did it? No. No, it wasn't about money. Um, had it been about money, we, we would have quit years ago. Um, I, I have that bug in me that says uh, entertainment is, is my life, and, and it is. Um, comedy, there's audience participation. I just love entertaining. I love, you know, putting a smile on their faces or perhaps doing I believe in touching someone emotionally. Um, it's just called entertainment. If I can take someone's away from their troubles for an hour or so, it's a wonderful feeling. You can tell when someone enjoys what they do because you can hear the passion and the excitement in their voice. And I hear it from you when we talk and I hear it from you when you're on stage. It's just, you, can't, you can't fake that. You can't pull the wool over anybody's eyes. When you believe in it, you believe in it. Well, how lucky am I? You know, when you're a young man you, you, who loves music like I do, I idolize people like the harp tones and the heartbeats and Anthony and the Imperials and the Drifters. And later they become my peers, my friends, my buddies. I mean, how great is that, you know? And um, then, of course, living up here in the Catskills, I worked all the, the Catskill resorts as a solo artist. I had 16-piece charts, and I would work with people like Joan Rivers and Alan King and uh, uh, Howie Mandel and, and just the biggest names in showbiz. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful career. And I got to work in radio with, with Imus doing, you know, for 10 years, doing characters on his show. And, uh, you know, I've always liked comedy, so that was another joy. Uh, Imus in the Morning uh, had two characters on his show, and I think you, you know them both. Uh, one is Geraldo Santana Banana, and the other one is Ray. Geraldo Santana Banana. He was a crazy person in charge of editorial opinion, and he just spoke just like this. He was from the South Bronx. Were you the general manager or the station just manager? Just the Louisville product. The Louisville Project in the Bronx. <laughs> and what about Rainbow? Say, so, killer is Rainbow Johnson. Me and the boys got a little ditty for you. So, I'm gonna do a little song. Say, so, here, fellas. And then I would do like a, a parody. I'd do all the voices. <laughs> hey, killer. Check this out. The Earls, man. Dig this. Sweet harmony. Do it, y'all. Come on. I'm a in the morning. He's a killer, don't you know? He's the number one man on the radio. All the other stations are going wild Trying to find a new copy of his style I can see the party I'm in the morning You the main man I'm a singer You the king Of radio land Every morning on 6 to 6 Have you in BC I can see the morning That is where I must will be I'm a singer I'm a singer I'm a singer I'm a singer Do it y'all I'm a singer Wow I'm a singer cool is that? Geraldo Santana Banana and Rainbow Johnson. Certainly the talent is coming out in those great clips. And you know what? There's not many. I looked long and hard and low just to find what I found there. But I've been told that they found a few uh, cassettes when Larry was cleaning out his house to move to Florida. So hopefully we will be able to hear those classics someday. They, along with our pally Larry Chance, belong in the Hall of Fame. You know, in the mid-60s, the doo-wop era died and just kind of disappeared as the English invasion took over. It didn't phase out our pally as he renamed the group and he ruled the New York City area for a number of years. We changed the name of the group to Smokestack. We added a horn section. 
and um, all the stand-up singers, Ronnie, Tony played uh, percussion instruments. I played the congas, and we became a pretty hot New York City dance band. We were working in places like the Peppermint Lounge, the Headliner, and uh, we did that for quite a while until the so-called revival, which is when we went back to being the Earls. Um, did James Brown? Uh, I, did James Brown sing with the uh, Smokestack? Was he with you? No. Oh, yes, he was. Hold on, folks. We're going to listen to Smokestack. The wall. It's called Wall Between Us. And tell me if Larry Chance doesn't sound like James Brown. Take a listen. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened to that thing three times. You sound just like him. <laughs> uh, not like James. Did you have the moves like James Brown there, Larry? I, I love all kinds of music. And, um, you know, over the years, I've recorded a jazz out jazz. I've recorded country. I've recorded r and B. I've recorded doo-wop. I just love music. We are paying tribute to Larry Chance here in the doo-wop revival, just one of the great entertainers of our time, one of the great voices, in my opinion, of the doo-wop era. He told me in the 2016 interview that one of the songs, one of his favorite songs of his, was the slow version of Never. Here it is.
We are paying tribute to Larry Chance here in the Duop Revival with yours truly, Glenn Fisher. We lost Larry earlier this week, September 5th, 2023, if you're listening to this at a later date. Just an outstanding gentleman. Never heard anybody say a bad word about him. And as a matter of fact, I never heard it Larry say anything bad about anybody. He just had that positive outlook all the time. In my interview with him back in 2016, he was telling me that one of his favorite songs was a superior hit called Lost Love. Lost Love, one of my favorite all-time songs by the uh, Superiors. And uh, in fact, I'll tell you how much I liked it. I re-recorded it on our... Uh, I believe it was on our Streets of the Bronx album. That's where we're going to play it from. So let's listen to Lost Love by Larry Chance in the Earl. Lost love was I, like it used to be born, until you say, darling, that your man wants more. All of my memories, darling, all of my cares, they are too. song, Lost Love, uh, originally by the Superiors, that version by our guest tonight, Larry Chance and the Earls. Uh, nice version, Larry. Thank you. Uh, everything's cruising along in your life, and, uh, you know, you had success early, and then the music went away, and you found a way to make a living and do the things that you love to do, and then uh, the big scare came uh, in, uh, was it 2000, 2001? Uh, you found out you had cancer. Yes, and, um, I think no matter who, you know, when you're when the doctor says uh, it came back positive, you've got cancer. Um, it, it's kind of it, it's. I can't even explain to you what you feel inside. But when it, when he told me it was right on my vocal cords, it's frightening because I can't live without what I do. I just cannot live without music, and um, they told me I might never sing again and. I was determined. I love what I do, and I knew I'd come back. The positive attitude, and I've known a lot of people, as we all have, that uh, have fought cancer, are fighting cancer, uh, and uh, the ones that I know that have overcome uh, are the ones that have been just so positive and just said, look, I'm not going to let this thing defeat me. Well, you know, I believe, and I do. And uh, a lot of prayer, and, and a lot of my fans were rooting for me and praying for me, and... Uh, I really, I really believe in that. I believe that the body can heal itself. Uh, I had incredible doctors. Larry was diagnosed again about six months ago, and despite undergoing immunotherapy, the cancer was just too strong for Larry to fight off. He is now a member of the Heavenly Choir, and boy, oh boy, is it great. Gene Pitt, Shep Shepard, Maurice Newton, Fred Paris, just to name a few. Boy, I tell you what, we are all in for a treat when we pass through those heavenly gates. Hopefully, not anytime soon. Hey, Larry was active right up until just a couple of months ago. 
He did a show in Pennsylvania and then with his longtime friend Billy Vera, although he was too sick to do more than one song, and that was a song they had recorded earlier this year, Stand By Me. When the night has come Oh, and the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand by me And darling Come on and stand by me And if the sky we look upon Should tumble and fall All the mountains Should crumble to the sea Let me tell you, darling, I won't cry I won't cry no, I, I won't shed a tear Just as long as you stand by me, pretty little doll, I want you to stand by me. And just before Larry got sick, he got together with Warren Gratis of the Belmonts, and they recorded and released Harvest Moon. As always, our pally was fantastic on his finale.
As Larry said earlier, that he loved all kinds of music, and he did it. And as you know, if you listen to this show, I love a cappella. So I'm not getting away without doing a remembrance show to Larry Chance without doing a little a cappella. On the streets of the Bronx is where I want to be. Standing on the corner singing good old harmony Waiting for the man to come along and discover me My father preaches, son, please change out Oh, but I don't want to work, I want to be a singing star Oh, yes, drive up and down the Bronx in my brand new shiny car On the street is where I want to be Singing good old harmony on the on the streets is where I wanna be. Is where I wanna be. Oh wait, don't bother me. On the streets of the Bronx is where I wanna be. On the corner of Belmont and 187th Street. Oh, and I'll be waiting for the man to come along and discover me. On the streets of the Bronx. 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 On the streets of the Bronx is where I wanna be.
We'd sing in the schoolyard where our voices rang true. We didn't know much about B flat or C. We only knew where we wanted to be singing. I did manage to get a couple of a cappella classics in there. We had the Streets of the Bronx that was used in the movie in the play A Bronx Tale and a cappella with my friends. You know, it's difficult doing these shows when you lose one of our stars like a Larry Chance, but it's even more difficult when they're a friend. It wasn't a long friendship, maybe 10 or 11 years, but I'll tell you what, it was a fun one. The last several months or so, he would always call me Big Turkey. Every time we talked to one another, he'd say, hey, Big Turkey, how you doing? That was Larry Chance. And he always told me, whenever we were together, every time we were together, he always told me how much he appreciated what I did for the music with this show and the Doo-Wop Ramblings newsletter. Think about that. I'm a guy like many of you who grew up loving Larry Chance's music. And now he's my pally telling me how much he appreciates what I do. Just goes to prove we are all alike. We'll close this tribute tonight with his song, I'll Be Seeing You, and I know I will. Thanks for the music, Pally. It'll live for eternity. Rest in peace. See you.